What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So about a, I'm gonna say a month ago, we went and picked up a steel bodied 1940 Willys and did a video on it. Um, I kind of explained to you guys why a 1940, 1941 Willys was kind of my favorite car. I showed you a picture of my dad's car uh, that he had way back in, I don't know, it was like 97, 98. We don't exactly remember when he actually sold the car. I was pretty upset when he sold it. He actually sold it to build a 68 Camaro that ended up being one of the cars that started the entire fast racing series, um, which in return, he sold that car to build the 69 Z01 that we actually still have. But back on the Willys, he uh, sold it and went out to California pretty much to never be seen again. And then I ended up finding it in like 2011, 2012 at uh, Barrett Jackson. It sold Barrett Jackson a couple of times but we never actually knew where it went. When we bought the steel bodied car, I was just Googling online. I actually have the VIN number of his red car. Um, and I found it all the way back near us in Detroit. So we just got back from about a three hour trip south of Detroit and picked up the car my dad sold probably about uh, 20, 22 years ago. This is exactly the way he sold it. Even with the tires he had on it. The tires have never been changed. It's got different exhaust tips. I'll explain what's all different on it. So got the original rear tires. Still got rubber underneath. They used to do burnouts out of this old car lot all the time in this thing. And still got rubber underneath from all the burnouts they used to do in it. So it's a fiberglass body, outlaw body, I believe. Outlaw body, outlaw frame. Um, it's got fiberglass fenders, fiberglass doors fiberglass rear fenders uh big black chevy we'll show you underneath the hood um the only change that has happened to this thing and it just happened like i'm gonna say two weeks ago oh he opened this door is somebody redid the interior in it now i wasn't crazy about the pictures when we saw the interior but it actually looks pretty good used to have a bench seat in it me it used to be my dad me well, my dad, my sister, me, and where'd Taylor ride in this thing? I don't remember. She rode on mom's lap, didn't she? Yep. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> so he's my dad, me, and my sister, and my mom. My sister would ride on my mom's lap. Uh, we used to drive this thing all over the place. We used to go to car shows. I guess that's before we were cool and started racing. We were just boring car show people. Yeah, this thing is, the paint is so nice. You can't, it's hard to believe this thing was painted 20-some years ago. Paint is real nice. I mean, the polish on the wheels, which I think we're going to put some different wheels on it. Somebody curbed this wheel. I don't know how you curb a wheel with that big of a tire, but somebody ended up doing it. I mean, other than the wheels, this thing is super nice. It's got a few paint chips on it. I mean, this thing has literally been all over the United States, all the way out to California. Uh, it's got a little bit of a chip right there, but other than that, this thing is nice and ready to go. Interior is super nice. It had a, uh, like a light tan interior. And it was a falling apart. I don't know what kind of material they used, but it was nasty. But it's got a uh, aftermarket chassis, four nine inch. Um, let's see, it's turbo four hundred. But uh, we're gonna get this thing off the trailer, and we'll show it to you a little more. All right, so under the hood is a, we don't remember if it's a 468 or a 496, it's been so long. But uh, it's a 671 blower. Um, this motor is pretty cool. It's speckle painted. So the story is this motor was in a jet boat and it was actually landing in the bottom of Lake Wabasee, which is about 45 minutes that way. And uh, the boat cracked in half, boat sank, motor sat in the bottom of the lake for about a week. And then they went and got it, pulled it up, and rebuilt the thing. And then it got put right into this thing. You gotta drive like you're an American graffiti. <laughs> Oh, it does have a boost gate. 
have the same door poppers in it with your keys. Oh yeah, did we tell them? I didn't tell them. Uh -uh. So I'll tell you guys as we're idling down the road. I saved the keys from this thing. I found them one day. And these keys used to hang up in my bedroom at my parents' house. And I always wanted to find the car and use the keys. Well, it's got a different door popper on it now. And the keys don't even fit the ignition, so these keys are pointless. <laughs> but these keys were the original keys for the car. I don't know how we fit four people in this thing. Well, you were like a quarter of the size you are now. Probably. quarter maybe two-thirds try it again that's about half because watch oh yeah <laughs> nice it feels like it's only getting about half the throttle all right so we are having problems getting this old girl to be full throttle um seems like if we move the throttle linkages to full <laughs> throttle and then step on the pedal the pedal will actually hold it full throttle, but if you step on the pedal, it won't move the linkages full. So we're gonna try to shorten up the cable. Is that what we're doing, shortening the cable? Uh, yeah, an adjustment on, I think it's a low car cable, and there's an adjustment here, and if not, we can make the cable shorter if we have to, but we don't wanna do that. Yeah, so, I don't know, just can't, uh, can't be rolling around with uh, like, 70% throttle. It's just not uh, good for the soul. All right, Ryan adjusted on the throttle cable. I actually don't even know. What do you do? Uh, he, he adjusted it. We'll just yeah. leave it at that. We're not going to go drive it, and we're not going to dyno it because uh, Ryan told me to floor it a couple times. Oh, wait, 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 man. Let's not put this on me. And I floored it a couple times. And we got ourselves a rock hard radiator hose. Now it's cooled down, it's been a couple hours since we drove it. I can pinch it now, but we need to do either a compression test or a leak down on this thing. We smelled a little bit of coolant when we got back from our drive. Not gonna be anything major, possibly some head gaskets. So maybe this guy didn't even know that it had a problem. Um, probably didn't, he seemed like a really cool dude. Obviously we're gonna find the problem just because of the way we drive things around here. Actually, I drive things around here. Pedal to the metal, no matter what. All right, anyways, we're gonna pull the plugs out of this thing. Compression tester, leak down one of them. Just see what's going on. Okay, cylinder one on this car is gonna be very easy because this has got a, it's like a fluid dampener or ATI, whatever, it's marked. So we've got the timing pointer at zero, which has got the piston straight up and down. So we will fill it full of air. See, we've got 100 pounds we're pumping in here and we're only leaking 6%. So this cylinder, we're not even gonna 
dig into. The cylinder is perfectly fine. So cylinder number two, we're leaking about 22%. Um, one thing you do, get yourself a little hose. You'll hear a lot of air, but you'll hear like distinct air when you can hear where it's going. Like right now we got the hose on the radiator cap. Can't really hear anything. Go up back here to the tailpipe. You know, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'll stick you in the exhaust. Might be able to hear that, might not, but uh, we hear some air going into the exhaust. So um, possibly a valve not fully seeding. Uh, that's not, I mean, that's 20%. Something like this is not something to be seriously worried about, but uh, we're gonna move on down the line and see what else we can find. Cylinder number six is where we're at right now. We are leaking, eh, I'm gonna say 18%, and I heard it right away. Coming right out of the valve cover, which means 20% of the air is going past the ring into the crankcase. Um, also, not a huge problem, just could need, it's got a scuff in the cylinder wall. Could be why this thing hazes a little bit of blue smoke. I mean, it's smoking because it's so fat. But uh, not a huge, I mean, that's, you know, we're leaking 20, well, we're not even leaking 20%. Because I'm not at 100, the compressor needs to turn on. Nope, we got it right there. So leaking, I'm going to say 16%. So huge issue, no, but uh, I mean, you can hear it right there. We got a little bit of blow by right there. Um, that's nothing I don't think we're going to worry about. All right, well, that test didn't really tell us what we thought, but I think we might be on to something. Ryan brought up a good idea. Maybe we got to pull the blower off and inspect the intake gaskets because if somebody was driving this thing around just putzing around and never got the thing you know never beat on it or got into boost and then we do it and obviously our first test drive the first time we get on the good street we're beating the crap out of it um could be a leaky intake gasket this thing could just have some cheap fill pros on it and you know they're not the nice steel cores or something and when we create boost it's kind of pushing some coolant uh I don't know there could be multiple things but one of the easiest tests is just put it together i mean it never overheated never got hot we'll just put it together give it a tune-up obviously she needs new spark plugs put some new wires on it these wires are beat these wires got to be the original wires um they're just they're whooped actually over there i just pulled the plug boot off and it didn't even feel like it was clipped onto the little thing it just felt like it was just chilling there it doesn't look too bad for what a car built in 2002 or something like that no it was built sooner than that this was already in california in 02 was it yeah this thing was built probably 97 holy crap i have to go try to find some pictures there's a picture of my little sister sitting in the driver's seat of this thing with a pacifier in her mouth and i'm pretty sure that picture has the date on it holy crap i want to say that it's about 97 doesn't look bad for the car built in 97. It doesn't, doesn't look like it dated itself very much, hardly at all. No, because uh, my parents built the house that they live in right now in 98, and I don't think this car has ever been here. <laughs> I remember it at our old house, but I'll never remember it being here. The only thing that dates itself is that speckled splatter paint job on the, on the block and the heads. Yeah, that's cool, though. I think it's neat. I always thought that was cool as a kid. That, I always, I mean, everything's how I remember it. Well, besides the interior, but you can definitely tell by the steering wheel. This is the old steering wheel. This will tell you how bad the interior was, too. I'll show you the radio cover, but this is the old steering wheel. I mean, that's a steering wheel from, like, 1995. Like, oh, for sure. There's no, oh, yeah. there's no denying that mid-'90s billet <laughs> steering wheel. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, the... This is what color the interior was, and that stuff just flakes off with your finger. Like, this is the radio cover out of it, and this is the original um, interior, and you can just scratch the fake leather right off of it. All right, pretty cool to see this thing in our garage. Um, I almost said back in this garage, but it's never been in this garage. You know, like I said before, this was like my dream car. I was probably seven, eight years old when my dad had this thing. And like, this is the car that I drew pictures of growing up. Um, like I showed you before, they're actually still in my pocket. Um, 
I've kept the keys to this thing since my dad sold it. They don't fit it anymore, which is kind of pointless. This was the car that I remember growing up. This is the car. I mean, I found it in 2010 and I've followed it ever since I found it to hopefully one day get it back and here she is. So pretty cool to have this car back here. I'm actually pretty excited to get it going and one, just cruise it around. I mean, I never drove it until today. And two, I was always kind of wanting my dad to take this thing down the drag strip and he never did i remember one day we were at osfield dragway which was our home track until it got shut down um this thing was up near the staging lanes and everybody tried to get him to race it and he just didn't we never knew how fast it was we never knew how much power it made uh, we kind of had a guess but you know we were guessing somewhere around 700 horse and uh run low low 11s is it going to do that? I don't know. That was always kind of a guess. Um, I never knew how much boost the thing made until today. Five pounds of boost is probably pushing it, but we're going to find out because it's going to be fun to finally take this thing down the racetrack, put it on the dyno, find out how much power it makes, tune it up, make it run good, um, get some good tires on it so we can drive it and have some fun with it. And then who knows? I mean, heck, we were joking, saying, let's just take it on True Street at the MCA. Like, we're just messing around but that's something that we would do just because we like to drive our stuff and beat on it and have fun and don't really necessarily like working on them or breaking them but that always happens for some reason but uh you guys will definitely see more of this thing uh right now possibly not we've got so much stuff going on but anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this video so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one